I was late for the first class, so that class ran over. So now I was late for the second class. So we're going to talk about mice, treat your bees or not. Okay? Personally, I don't care what you do. <laughs> if you want to treat your bees, I don't care. If you don't want to treat your bees, I don't care. But I want us all to do at least one thing is how many mites are in our hive. Okay? Why would you treat if you didn't have any very many mites? You'd be done to treat, wouldn't you? So why would you be treated? You got to remember this about mites and honeybees. Mites carry viruses or transmit viruses, and if mites don't kill your bees, viruses can. So, you know, maybe you've got bees that are resistant to mites, but they still can die from viruses vectored by the grow of mites. Would you treat bees that were not mite resistant stock? Maybe. But if they wasn't mite resistant stocks, aren't they going to be ate up with mites? Maybe. I say they are. Why did you get the bees for? They weren't mite resistant stocks. Because you were going to treat them? You didn't know any better. Very good answer. So, on the mite whole issue, if we're going to treat or not, if we're not going to treat, if we're going to treat, we want what kind of stock? Mite resistant stock. Where do we get those mite resistant stocks? From anybody that tells you they got mite resistant stock. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's not correct, is it? So you want to do a little research. I want a better perfume that some of those mites. You want them ankle buyer <laughs> mite leg chewers. Where's Dwight? He's got a, you know, in Ohio they talk a little bit different than they do in Indiana. He's got a little, he's going, Lake Shooters, Lake Shooters. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? How's that spell? Lake Shooters. <laughs> talking about them Lake Shooters. I'm thinking, what the heck is he saying? Lake Shooter Queens. Lake Shooter Queens. I didn't know what he was talking about. They were Lake Shooters. Ankle buyers, I could understand. My buyers, I'd understand. Lake Shooters. I didn't get it. And I followed him around for three days trying to figure out what the heck he was saying. You know, come on. I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So we want to research those mite resistant stocks. What other kind of bees, if we're not treating, do we want to have? Hygienic. Huh? Hygienic. Hygienic bees. Why? We like people that clean up after themselves, don't we? So we want hygienic bees because they clean stuff out of the hive, debris. You know, they're even good for for uh, small hive beetle because small hive beetles like to make piles of stuff and drop them in the hive. And then they say, researchers tell you that they go down and they pupate in the ground. If you got a bunch of crap in the bottom of your hive, I'm sorry, them, them, them small hive beetles will pupate right there. So we want hygienic bees. What other kind of bees we want to have this, since we're up here in the north? Survivor stocks, but northern raised, northern raised queen, survivor stock, SMR, VHS, hygienic, mite resistant. So now you're talking about seven pedigrees of different kinds that you got in one queen. That's pretty tough to find. I want them to be gentle, too. You want them to be gentle. <laughs> then you want them to produce a lot of honey. <laughs> then you want them to, you don't have to feed them. <laughs> then, you know, this genetics thing is great, and we're making great progress on getting my resistant stocks. But, you know, they bred a bee that was resistant to American fowl brood. Now, that's something. <laughs> Resistant to American fowl brood. You know the only problem with that queen? No honey. They never made any honey. No. So, I mean, when we're doing all this genetic thing, we're all wanting so much. 
And if we finally get it, we're going to get a bee that just pollinates and doesn't make any honey and maybe have to feed it all winter long. Is that what we want? Okay, so we got to keep this in mind. So now we're on our management scheme, you know, and I'm thinking on this mite resistant stocks, you know, they're all after these, these bees that attack mites, which is a good thing because when Broa mites came to Indiana, I want to tell you, those mites were crawling around on our bees and they didn't even know they was there. They didn't. It was crazy. How could you let something like that crawl on you? And then they crashed and they killed a bunch of bees. But you know what? We're building my resistant stocks, but you know what else we're building? Smarter mites. Now it's hard for me. Used to you could get in a hive of bees and you could see the mites crawling on the bees. You could see it. Now they know where to hide. Where are they hiding? They're hiding underneath. I mean, they, as soon as the light hits them, they're hiding. If you see, used to, you didn't have a real mite look if you seen a bro of mite. If you see a bro of mite on your beat today, you don't need to do no shirt or shake, feed the roll, alcohol wash, sticky board. If you see a mite in your hive today, you got plenty of them. Because that's how smart the mites got. Okay? Now, I think part of the problem, though, is I can't see as good as I did a long time ago or 10 years ago. So maybe I'm not seeing, but I'm just telling you folks what I'm seeing in, in, in my bees and my mites. Um, how many of you ever used a sticky board? Okay. What are these great for? Counting mites. Counting mites. Okay. Now. If you put this in for three days in your hive, what are the things you want to consider on a mite count? <coughs> how big the hive is? How many bees is there? Because if you put it in there on two frames of bees and you had two mite drops off the of two frames of bees, could you have a high mite load? Well, yeah, you could. But now you're talking about 16 frames or 20 frames of bees and your mite drops, then if you got four, that's not a bad load, right? So they're used for monitoring mites, okay? When do you use them? Whoever raised their hand, when do you use them? Ideally yes. in the spring and then in August. Spring and August, okay. So you put it in the spring to find out what your mite load is, okay? Now why did you use it in August? To see if it increased? Yes. Okay. It is. And what was your mite load in the spring when you put that sticky board in there? It was very low. Are you talking four, five, um, ten? Under twelve. Under twelve. How large was your cluster? Just um, one deep. One deep. They're full of bees, or if they's a tight cluster, they're the size of a basketball or a soccer ball. Um, smaller than a basketball. Okay. How much brood was in that hive? About six. Frames of brood. How many, if you're talking about your natural mite drops, because this has always got me baffled, how you can figure the economic threshold, okay? So that's what I'm, point I'm getting at. So if you had that many mite drops, where are 80% of your mites? In the cell. In the Where? In the brood. Yeah. Okay, because I didn't get this <laughs> when we were doing the, you know, figuring out the threshold. So you had that many mites. Yeah. So then did you take that times 80%? No. If you did, would there be very many mites in there? Probably 80, 90% of the time. 80, yeah. No. If you took 10 times 80. Yeah, then you get. Then you get 800. Right. Is 800 a lot of mites? Yeah, it's a lot. Okay, so what did it tell you? You had four mites, and so that's what I'm trying to figure out what the, you know, if you've got higher, in the springtime of the year, if your mite levels are low, they're going to be high, higher. You got a lot more brood to raise, 
A lot more mice to be raising. So that's why you're crashing in, in uh, August. If you and the better my hive gets, the stronger I hive, the stronger my hive is, and the most amount of money, uh, honey, I mean, that I have in my hive, the more likely it dies. Yeah. Do you know why? I'm going to guess that my mind wasn't that high. What happens is you got such a prolific building hive. And you had those mites and they just kept raising brood and they kept raising brood and they would just boil them with bees. Not only did you praise it, yeah. you kept raising more and more mites. So they just was full of them. I did a, I did a, I did a, I did on the sticky board. We want to use them to monitor and sometimes I go to extremes and things, but you know, we got to really think as beekeepers and Try to figure other things out, you know, so we know what's in there. But I had two hives that set side by side, okay? They both had the same life. They went, they were started, they were two year old queens. They were started, they stayed together, they went to California, they pollinated almonds, they came back from California, they set side by side. Okay, this one was a better one. It made more bees, but this one was okay. This made 150 pounds of honey. This one made 80 pounds of honey, but it's still healthy, okay? So I put sticky boards in them in uh, July. I put a sticky board in the one that made 150, but by this, you know, I, I put them in there, and like I said, they're this close together. This one had 40 mites. The one that made the 150 pounds of honey with full bees, wonderful hive of bees, love them. This one, still a good producing hive that only made 80 pounds. I put a sticky board in there, okay? I waited three days. This one had, I think, four to eight mites in a three day natural drop, okay? This one, the good hive, which they, they all had a lot of bees. This one had 40, 40 mites. So do you think, you know, that doesn't sound too bad for a three day drop. Do you think? You wouldn't think. But to me it alarmed me because this one only had four or whatever and this one had 10 times as many. So what I did, I pulled the honey off of it. It also just tell me, well, maybe this. Why would it be different, Gary? They were sitting that close together. Why wouldn't this? Well, anyhow, I pulled the honey off of it. I put in sticky boards, okay? And then I put a treatment in there. And in 12 to 16 hours, the hive that had the four had when they get it, 14, 20, it was all it killed. The one that had 40, do you, can you guess how many mites? If you guess, I'll pay you, I don't know, I'll buy your dinner. 175. Could you guess how many mites dropped in the same time period in the one that had the 40 and this one had the, what'd you guess? 120. 120. 800. Nope. Close to a pound. Nope. Three. Here's the sticky board to prove it. And if you want to count, there's over 1,200 mites oh, on this sticky board. Well, that was going to be a dead hive in August. It still may be a dead hive. I don't know. Just this year. Just this year. But so when my point of the matter is, we're using these sticky boards. And we're counting mites, and I mean the sticky board is probably, you know, says that we can, but is it a good way to measure the number of mites in our hive? Put up a sugar sheet, that's it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. That's why my question to you is. I mean the sticky <laughs> board. To your original question, though, why? Why is this one we have? I just, uh, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> is it the queen stock? Is it the 
the mics like this be better? Oh, they live right next to each other. I know, but it could have been the queen stuff, but I mean, they was both northern raised queens. Yeah, but it, environmental issues were exactly the same, because they were side by side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be, I, I would say it has to be the same. I would say that that extra, that extra amount of bees. Bees in the brood that was producing that hive is where it got all these mice. Because there was, last year when I had all of them in here, <coughs> Yeah. Um, the overwintered newts that got really big had a lot more mice, and the hive that I was trying to do some queen rearing in there, full brood for weeks, it totally, it was spectacular that hive. That hive crashed at the end of August and just died. And then the other I was able to, that, did not, that I did not try queen rearing, Because they'll yeah. jump to the hive that's not been treated. They will? That's what's happening right now. So if I were just to treat my overwintered hives, let's say I had 12 hives in that apiary, and four of them had a mite problem, and mm -hmm. eight of them didn't, and I treat the four that have a mite problem, that now if we have a debate on whether or not I should... Yeah, you got a debate here, and, 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 and it is a good debate because... If you're not going to treat those hives that have got high mite load, and you're not going to treat the ones that don't, the new new queens generally survive, and they're new and they don't have these mite loads. But if you're not going to treat them, what are they going to do? They're going to die. You think just what they're going to happen? So what happens when mites cause problems in your hive? And they get these high mite loads, then it causes viruses to go out in the hive. And what happens is, is those mites are vectoring viruses, and bees start, the queens start playing virus infected brood. I mean, the, the hive is still trying to be protected, <coughs> but she is laying brood that's dead. It's going to die. And that's the reason your big production hives and then big healthy ones that you knew that the mites couldn't have killed that hive because they were so strong, they could not. That's why you don't notice it because we're not doing fall brood inspection. If you was doing a fall brood inspection, you would see that virus and the dead brood and the patch of brood. When you pull the frames out of those hives and they died, could you see little patches of brood? Yeah, it's not really patches. Patches. Yeah. Because that was premature. All that stuff that she laid died. That's the reason it crashes to nothing. So there's only one way to turn a queen around to lay virus-free brood. And how is that? A new queen. A new queen is, is, is a great one. But if we're trying to save that hive and that queen, how can we make her lay good again? Get rid of the mites. Get rid of the mites. That's, that's the start. But how, how do we how do we make her lay good brood again? Can she can we make her stop laying? You gotta make her stop laying. Because that's the reason these hives are crashing, is she's virus infected, she's eating food, she's continuing to lay, but she can't heal herself. The only way, and this hive right here, Gary, that was crashing, I turned her around. She quit laying for three weeks. So she's basically a queen, you know, nothing. So she is laying good brood now. How did you not, how did you keep her laying for three weeks? Well, I treated them to kill the mites and then I got her in a cage. Okay. And I just held her in the hive. She quit.
quit laying. Of course, they were going through a bruising time when she started to crag. They had already quit laying because there was no food coming in. So, and they didn't yeah. try to raise another chicken. <laughs> they didn't have anything in there to raise her with because it was all going to die. And see, and you can see super seeker cells in these kind of hives. Well, they tried to raise the queen, but they didn't. You know why they didn't? Because the larva was going to die. But the bees are trying to make them. So the only way you can heal a queen is to shut her down. But she can get rid of the viruses if she's shut down? Yeah, but I'm not saying it wouldn't come back easier the next time. But that's the only way you can say it. So, yes, sir. You mark your queen. I mark my breeders. And I mark my um, test, whatever, if I'm doing a test. These two that you're, these two that you're talking about, were mm -hmm. they marked? They wasn't marked, but I knew the queens. I knew they was original. So you don't think there's any way they superseded the one? No. I managed them. You know, I, I, maybe, am I 100% sure? No. Nobody's 100% sure. No. Anything. But, I mean, as far as... I was in that hive because we were using for brood production, we were using in the cell builder yard, so we're in that hive quite a bit. Okay, here's another point on that too. Had they have requeened, there's a good chance that that smaller hive would have had more honey than the other one. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they're doing a... Well, yeah. So, you know, I, I'd say you're probably right. I mean, they, they, they didn't requeen. So, what would you do? Are, are you gonna treat or not treat? Not treat? I mean, I don't care. But when you see, that's just, you gotta expect you're gonna have to replace your bees. Cause they're gonna die. Unless you got that perfect stock that we continue to work for. It'll be here next year. It'll be here next year. You know. Next year. But if you did, you know, if you did have to, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, I try to rationalize everything. Um, if your kids are sick, do you try to help them? If your cats and dogs got fleas and keep them in the house, do you try to help them? I mean, so I don't understand why I can't try to help my bees with whatever I want to do. You know? I mean, if I had one hive and I didn't want to treat them, or I'd want to use something that's safer. But I'm just saying, there's going to be situations you're facing in beekeeping, and if you want to keep bees, you're going to be forced to change the way you do things some way or another. And so let's not say, I will always treat, I will never treat, but let's not say we won't, you know, let's keep those open. I want to raise stock. It's my business. I do minimal treatments. And not on my, my hives I'm raising to raise fire resistant stock, but in my production hives, if my hives don't average 60 pounds of honey a year, then I don't make any money. I mean, what up? Unless you want to give me some money so I can same business, but I mean, I've got to do what I got to do. So minimal treatment, but monitoring is the main thing, and that's what I want all of us to do. Because, like I said, I don't care if you treat or if you don't treat, but you need to monitor just so you know that when your bees die, you know what killed them. I know what when this hive is dead come spring. I can't blame that on pesticide. I can't blame that on something. I know why they died. You know? Right? So that's the reason we need to monitor mine. No matter what our treatment system is, um, so we know why our colony died. If you get in your colony and you see that patchy brood, you didn't need to monitor anything. You know exactly what killed them bees. Mine. Virus. If you get into a beehive and their heads are all stuck in the cones and there's no honey in there, what those guys <laughs> do? They starve to death. You know? 
So monitoring your hives and doing sugar shakes and uh, that's another thing. If you treat your bees, how many of you ever treated your bees and the thing that they use said it kills mice, so you put them in there, you didn't test them, you didn't put a sticky board in there, but it says it kills mice. How many of you ever treated and just thought, I put the treatment in and the mice are dead? Do you know that Apistan <coughs> strips, blue valinate, only kills half your mice? Do you know that Kumaflos, check bite, only kills 40% of your mice? Do you know to kill any of your mice if you use those products? If you use powdered sugar, do you know that that kills your mice? You gotta use a sticky board to put in your hive when you do anything. Um, it was crazy. Matt Evans told me that he had this one hive, it was a super hive. And Hopscar, how many of you heard of Hopscar? That's the new thing. Hopscar is it, man. It is safe, no chemical, blah, blah, blah. Leave your supers on. Leave your supers on. New mixture. Matt Evans put that on that hive. He thought, Dave, I cheated. Let me new hop guard. It's fine. Dave, that hive was crashing. Did you put a sticky board in there when you tried that stuff? No, but he said, I'm going to do a power sugar bowl when I get home. He come, I see him the next day, and here's this powder sugar shake bottle in there, and it's got all these little red specks in it. I mean, yeah. I tried to try it with that hot scar and said it's supposed to work. But what, the whole point of this class is if you trust somebody because they told you they was this way, or it kills mice, you know, if you don't check with a sticky board or some type of ether, you, you don't know. You're as dumb as I am, or as dumb as I was. But I don't do any of that without checking it, you know? So if you want to do a powder sugar roll with all the <coughs> accounts, but you need to know what they are so you can make a decision on what you want to do. I know guys that did want to treat and their hive was crashing, so they went in there and they pulled all the brood out of that hive. And it turned around and saved it. <coughs> Didn't it, Gary? There's ways to do it without treating, but you're going to spend some time, folks. I treat minimal, and I use something that works. White. Huh? White. I, uh, what knocks these mice down in 12 hours was the apron bar strip. Okay. Oxalic acid. That is good. That is safer. I don't have time to exalic all of mine. So temperature time. It's, when does oxalic work best? Now in a broodless period. Yes. Okay. Does oxalic kill mice under brood? Yes. Okay. So if your hive is crashing in June, July, are you going to treat with oxalic? Yes. Is it going to do any good if you did? Not much. Not much. It's going to kill the ones on the outside. So you got to use this law when you're treating. If you treat, when's the best time to kill the mites in your hive? When there's no brood, right? When is the best time to treat for mites? When you have to use the less, least amount of mite treatment, whatever it may be. Okay? Right? So that means when there's a smaller number of bees, when there's a smaller number of brood, which would be when? When there's a dirt. Let's say if I got a little winter colony. And it's January, aren't they about pretty small with no brood? What about I just bought this package of bees and I got this queen from southeast Georgia? I mean, would that be a good time to use oxalic or? I mean, seriously. Are they, question, are yes. they going to have a high enough mite count that you're going to say, oh, 
all I need to treat, or would you just Well, it? there you go. Now, what we talked about at the beginning of class, <clears throat> you need to know what it is. If you bought a package of bees and it didn't have any mites and it didn't have any high beetles, why should you? So what am I saying? Take a little bit of them bees out of that package or whatever, the nuke or whatever you got. Do that little sugar shake. Get in that hive there in January when they're all clustered up there around that uh candy board or bucket of feet or whatever you're doing, just grab a little handful there and do a little sugar shake. If they don't have any mites, why should you be even worried about it? Tell me that sugar shake, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Have you ever heard of uh, <coughs> using the powder sugar and shake, put the bees in the powder sugar and shake it to, to get them up? You know, you've seen the, the alcohol log. Kathleen. I have the directions in my blue box that's in the cafeteria. Why aren't I in this mic treatment class? I'm sorry, I'm going to go get some. No, you don't have to. <laughs> this is the blue box. In the blue box in the cafeteria. Where's my young helper? You know where the blue box in the cafeteria is? Right as you walk in, you see the blue box there. Right. Okay. On your mics. I found a young man right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on your mics. On your mics. On your mics. On your mics. So. I mean, the whole point of this is you gotta monitor, you gotta check. And like I said, if you look into your beehives and you see a mite on a bee, you gotta monitor. You do. Because these mites are smarter. Yep, it's like seeing a mouse. You got one, you got ten. You know, so, but we've gotta monitor them. And you know, we've got to use the my resistance stock. And trust me, those bees do survive better with mice. But here's the whole thing on my resistance stock. We don't have any virus resistance stock. That's the one. If we had virus resistance stock, we would not even have to worry about mice. And I've told researchers this. I said, why do I want to, why do we even worry about mice? The only thing they're causing is they vector the viruses in the bees. I said, so why don't we just treat viruses or, uh, you know, why don't we do more studies on viruses? Oh, they were too hard. Why should I get a grant for a hundred million dollars for, for a virus when I can get 10 that are easy, you know, I can make the same money, it's a lot easier. Viruses are too hard, and if you think about it, the flu virus, the cold virus, you know, it's here, that's a hard one to crack. Who wants to tackle that? But hopefully one day, we got bees that, you know, through their genetics, are more resistant to sickness. Like me, I've never been sick a day in my life, you know, and that's gotta be good genetics, because it's not good eating, I can tell you that. You know, but. I mean, but when we're doing all this, then I'm telling you again, we're keeping working on these genetics, what are we gonna end up with? A bee that don't pollinate or make any honey? So while we're doing all this, we need to keep in mind about that as well. Any questions? Yes, sir. So you quarantined your queen on those two hives you had there. Mm -hmm. That brought about a brood break. Yes. No brood being laid, obviously. No brood being laid. That's okay. As long as they didn't try to requeen and raise Yeah, them. yeah. And you, and you watched that and they didn't do that. Did that knock the crap out of your mice numbers? I mean, mice need brood to reproduce. Well, yeah, it did. Because okay. those, the brood that, that was in there was dying. It, right. it knocked the heck out of all the population. That's right. But there was no bees. You know, I dwindled down pretty small. Yeah, that, 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 that's where I get the question. I, I've always read and understood that Without brood, there's no more mites. You can't, they can't reproduce outside. Right. They have to right. have brood. Right. A three, right. Week, a three week break should terminate amongst all the mites. And they right. claim that's kind of like the Russians. And they, and they claim that's, you know, and I think bees know that. And I think bees, you know, we're all worried about these mite biters and chewers, but I think my resistant stock, the queens know, the breeds know that they're going to quit brood production. Mm -hmm. And they're also going to swarm. If they're trying to 
get rid of something bad in the hive. You know, a scound, bees do that. And I think that's going to be another mite treatment or mite fighting mechanism between the honeybee is not only quit laying brood, now we're going to swarm. And, and, and if you think about it, Africanized bees, they don't have a big problem with the row of mites, do they, Kathleen? No, they find I them. I got them. They find them. Well, I'll keep them okay. the next class. Oh, oh, pass them out. No, they find burrow mites um, in Africanized bees down east. But they don't affect them as bad, do they? Might not be, yeah. And do you know why? They, they swarm them. all the time. They have lots of brood there. And that's my question. Where are these mites coming from in January? Yeah. They've got an extended, they had late brood from November to... Yeah, well, you know, those mites Where's that are living, them? they're just like the small hive beetles. When you, you get that final push of fall brood, they'll cluster, over. they'll cluster in with your bees. Yes, they will. They hang right in there, and they hang right underneath of them. And that's what the oxalic and when there's no that's, brood. Yeah, that's when there's the no brood, then that's what the oxalic okay. goes on there and puts the acid on them. And do you do the dribble or the, if you did it, would you do dribble? I've done the, i done the dribble. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. If I did, if it was legal, I did the dribble. Well, you you probably did it. Right yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, and I've tried a little bit of everything. You know, I've tried, they have, Flew out on the eight-day stand ship. I did the check mites one year, and I oh, I would get that stuff away from me. I wouldn't. I didn't want it in my truck, let alone in my beehive. Um, so I've done oxalic. I've done the vaporizing with the the oxalic acid. I've done vaporizing with um, what other kind of things? Oxalic. Vinegar oil. Vinegar. Uh, what? Vinegar. 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 Yeah. yeah. Vinegar. Mineral. I've done mineral oil. Mineral oil. I mean, if they, try I'm it. a beekeeper. Yeah. I'm gonna try anything once, you know. But I've tried all the thymol products. But you gotta remember, if you're using them kind of products, then you gotta do it when they say to do it. Okay. So you gotta pull your honey off, right? Dave, you're still pulling your honey off. Do you think a thymol-based product is gonna work? No. Not 50 and 30 degrees, is it? No, I can't use that now. So I just go in there with a little hammer and kill it every mile of feet. <laughs> what I use when they told me. No, I'm just teasing. But, so let's just please monitor. You going to do your sugar shake? Sugar shake, sugar shake. So, you know, and just keep getting bees that are my resistance because they will survive better. Because these Italians and a lot of these bees coming in from a lot of your big queen raisers, they're raising bees to raise bees. What was one of the first things that we learned in class? Bees that raise bees that has a lot of bees has a what? A lot of mites. A lot of mites. Okay. <laughs> so queen raisers, bee raisers, they want to produce bees that raise a lot of bees, which raise a lot of so we want guys to raise queens because they live through the winter, they provide production, and they're resistant. And again, you need to know where to go to get it. And you need to know where to go to get it. And we've been working very hard. And it's, beekeeping takes a lifetime to learn, and queen rearing is just a little bit under a lifetime. Maybe we can get it done in 10 years of doing it, then you finally feel comfortable. I don't know. You never feel comfortable. Yes, sir. Dave, you know, if we all learn how to make our own nuke, when you make a nuke, you break the brood cycle. There go the mites. Mm -hmm. And if you keep doing that over and over again, you keep breaking that mite cycle. You keep breaking in the mite cycle. So when are you going to make any honey? Well, you don't do it. You don't do them all that way. No, you don't do it all. Okay. So uh, that's a very good point, because if we keep raising nukes, then we don't need to buy bees next year because if I got two hives and I raise four nukes and start them in hives and I lose 50% if I do nothing with no treatments, then I still got two hives. Does that make sense? Three. Three? You got three. Two and you have four and half of them left. Half of them left. So then you got three. So you never need to buy bees. <coughs> Always raise your bees for next year, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Let's raise them this year 
and you don't have to get a production hive your first year. Everybody is, bee, this is what gets me, beekeepers want to make honey the first year. They think you get us some bees, you make 100 pounds of honey. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. I don't care if you get your package on the 15th of March. You're not going to make a 200 pound average. The only people that make 200 pound averages are people that have what kind of bees? Overwintered bees. So why not start out with a couple nukes, get her into a single. Now you got Dave, now I got to learn how to overwinter nukes. No, don't worry about that. Put in a single. Make sure they got food over in the sink. Okay? You don't need all that. Matter of fact, you don't even need new box. Why don't you just start in a sink? Okay? But all we're doing is taking care of it, talking to it every morning. And then come spring, <coughs> we got our one year old queen. It's going to be a complete flare, and she's going to make it 200 pounds. So, yeah, well, honey, you know what to do. Oh, yeah. Any other Dave, we needed that sugar shake one more time. Sugar shake. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the army during the 70s. That was back when disco was big. <laughs> I could do the shake. Disco. Any other questions? We're supposed to be done at three. Yeah. Thank you. Come on, give me some questions. That says four field. Mike, Matt, and I will often one where we talk about the vector virus. Will the mite actually even just bite the queen, or will she ever be, you know, a victim of the mite, the actual queen itself, or do they only attack the honeybees, or uh, do you know? I don't know that. You know, and most of these mites, they the biting all occurs in the pupa stage and then the larvae. A lot of that chewing is down in there. So the alive. Mite yeah, not but I'm not all saying all. that the mites may not feed. They vector, they feed off the blood of the, the pupae. And, and, but if they can't get any blood and they need blood, then they would feed off of adult bees. But really, the pupa and all that, the feeding, because when you're doing reproduction, when you're you know just like a honeybee, they need more nutrition. So all the reproduction is done in, in the pupa, so that's where a lot of the chewing and the eating on the bee occurs, but it does occur on adults when they need to have some blood, the vampire mice. And, and the workers in the winter time. Yeah. So they, yeah. it could happen. They could, it could happen. But the virus is what the queen gets. The, virus, the queen is gets the best food, the best care, but when that virus occurs, she gets it. And she can live where other bees are dying, but then it affects her reproductive system. And I told that to researchers a long time ago, and they said, no, you're wrong. <laughs> but then Judy Chen comes to us down in Bloomington, and she talks about horizontal and vertical virus, and Dave, you was right. I'm just a beekeeper, yes sir. It, it has become very popular. I use it just whenever I've got a hive mind. Is a full queen mm -hmm. that will reclaim themselves. Mm -hmm. I did that to eight hives, all oh, maybe August. It, it always works. I mean, it just clockwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, four of those didn't reclaim. And it was because I think it was because I had high micro and virus. You didn't have good. Yeah. yeah. I was able to back up and install new queens in those, and everything worked out good for me. The people that do not check to make sure that colony re-cleans, I know a lady that did it for three hives of monsters. You know what else you could do? You could introduce a virgin or a mating queen into those hives when you know they're crashing. You can introduce those and they accept them very well. And they start, you know, you get them through that winter. But what I found out about those kind of situations is they'll die the next. Used to, a mite free or a treatment free bee would live two years. You didn't have to treat, you just did it, you raised the bees, they lived two years. Something has changed, and I don't know what it is, because now they won't do that. So now, if you requeen that virus infected hive, they will make it through that winter and be productive, but they'll die the next year. So, you 
You need to just keep doing the replanting. So. Well, mites are our biggest problem, I think. Oh, there's no doubt they're 85% or better of what our problems with beekeeping are and the reason we're having so much trouble. But you also got to remember this, since we have those mites, every added stress will cause virus to break out. So that's where these neonics, that's where these pesticides, that's where a lot of these nutrition things are causing us more harm. No, they're not the main culprits, but they're compounding our problem with Varroa, and they are the needle that breaks the camel's back, and, and it also helps our, maybe our bees could survive with these mites, with mite resistant stocks if we didn't have other stress. Yes? Do you think that the mite treatment For what? I mean, my treatment would be effective in keeping that hive alive so you could get something out of it, but it ain't going to make that hive live indefinitely. Okay? So it improves it. It improves it, but it's still probably going to die. It, it changes what it does for me. Because, like I said, I got different parts of my operation. What it does to me, it allows me to get a pollination contract. It allows me to get a honey crop. And it allows me to maybe have a chance of getting another trip to California. And then bees back to divide to raise bees. So, that's where the only thing that helps me. But it doesn't keep them alive forever. Yes, sir. Just a little story. In our local club in Nashville, we got a guy who started a, a hive, a single hive, six years ago. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do anything but take honey off that hive. That's what he's done for six years. Mm -hmm. That's all he's ever done to mm -hmm. that hive. He still takes honey off the hive every year. That same hive. That's just one hive. And you also got to remember this. The more beehives that you have in your apiaries, the more problems that you've got. Yeah. If you just got one hive of bees and that's all you've got, you don't have to worry about these mites. But when you start becoming larger and start putting bee yards of 20 to 50 to 100, then you have to be, you have to do something. And you can, bees can survive without any treatment. If you just put one super, a honey, a honey super on them, and you just leave it set there and you don't do anything and they fill that super honey up and then they swarm they break the brood cycle then the next year they got a new queen they eat they fill that super honey up you take it all you know you can they can sustain themselves that's what he's doing that's what he's doing on a, a single hive yeah a swarm you know if they swarm they're doing their own mic control okay Thank you.